that we'll see the electronic structure uh, later, that, that we'll see that how you position the atom, uh, control the, the interaction among them, and therefore the electronic structure, lead the band structure uh, uh, of the solid uh, because of the arrangement of these uh, uh, atoms inside the lattice, and how they arrange, control the electronic band structure. Okay, So we can picture these uh, to consist of electronic bands uh, separate by a uh, band gap, right? Uh, and all of these can be derived by quantum mechanics, and we will talk a little briefly about it just to uh, give you a little bit of uh, mathematical background uh, that, that you can derive all these things from quantum mechanics. Uh, and, uh, and we can classify these uh, bands, right, from, from these uh, due to the physical electronic structure, you generate band gap, uh, band structure. And the band structure may or may not have a uh, band, uh, band gap. Uh, so here we can classify uh, based on these uh, uh, band structures. And it is an example, a very simplified version of an example. We'll, we'll go into deeper as we resolve these little bands. Here I'm just drawing a little bucket of, uh, of tracer to placeholder to hold my electron. So you can you can think uh, as uh, as a molecule, right? What, what what do you have? You know, you have molecule. You have the core orbital. This is core orbital. C O R E core orbital. Uh, and the core orbital are isolated, localized at the uh, at the atomic center, and they don't really interact with their neighbors. Okay. Uh, but then as you go higher and higher up into the valence band orbital or valence shell orbital as you go higher up. What happens? The orbital become bigger, uh, orbital become more diffuse, and they starting to interact with each other. And of course, form uh, type, different type of orbital. They form bonding orbital, uh, non-bonding orbital, or anti-bonding orbital. Okay? So, so this formation orbital with all these uh, band that you got, down here, including core orbital down way deep down here, correspond of course uh, all these uh, are special because you have electrons that in these orbital you fill them up, and uh, and of course in molecular orbital theory we we call the top one uh, uh, homo highest occupied uh, molecular orbital, so that corresponds the top uh, uh, molecular orbital that you have electrons inside. And the next one is also interesting. The next one is the user is called lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, LUMO, right? So, um, so and then usually there's an energy uh, gap between the HOMO and LUMO. Well, there are gap between the energy level in the first place because of quantum mechanics. You have quantization of energy state, right? So you generate all this discrete energy level due to Bohr. Uh, that we, we learned from first year. Uh, and, uh, and the special one is the, is the gap that between the HOMO and the LOMO, the, the highest, the, the one with the electron fill and the one without the electron, the, the, the lowest orbital that without any electron in them, the LOMO itself. So, so that's just uh, molecular orbital theory. So we think about diatomic molecule, you know, like uh, hydrogen, molecule, H2, uh, you can consider it that way. Now if you then think about, okay, H2 is just two molecules. Now maybe I can repeat this uh, uh, H2 molecule in a lattice, and then of course the more uh, 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 molecule you have, the more electronic energy state you would have, and this accumulation of energy state become very full, and you you generate a band that you have. Essentially, you have you have this uh, region with so many uh, electronic energy level in there that it is hard to uh, they lie very close to one another. Uh, it sounds like you have a continuous field band, but it's not true. You have you really have discrete energy state that you have within there. But most people draw it as a band uh, like that. Okay. So by the same token, what what you can uh, learn by analogy uh, of the molecular system is that 
the core shell uh, orbital, they are isolated, they feed down into the core, they don't interact with the neighbors, they will have its own band like this. And then uh, the higher level, uh, higher line uh, electronic state, right, will have also have its own band. It's called the valence band. These are the ones with the electron inside. And then, and then the top one, and then there are these uh, bands. Uh, these are the multiple level states that are very close to each other. This band uh, are unoccupied. They are unoccupied one day, and, and they correspond to Lumo and all the rest that's up there that does not uh, fill with electrons. So if you consider these kind of pictures, this essentially FO picture, what you can do is that you can you can uh, classify these uh, band, uh, atomic-like core band, right, deep down into the ionic core, into the nucleus, nuclei that you have, and then you have the valence band that correspond to bonding and non-bonding orbitals normally, and then you have conduction band, usually correspond to anti-bonding, well, some of them, uh, uh, anti-bonding. Of course, in the valence band, you also would have anti-bonding orbital as well, uh, just like, for example, water, some of them are anti-bonding, depending on how they arrange. But in the case of conduction band, usually you would expect some anti-bonding orbital, and most of them are called virtual orbital. Virtual in the sense that uh, they don't exist, they only exist in, in your theoretical consideration, uh, which is your MO theory, that, that how we make them up, uh, and, uh, and, and, and they are unoccupied. Okay? And then finally, if you go really, really out, way up in energy, very, very close to the ionization continuum, you have something called uh, hydrogen uh, atom light Rydberg orbital. And Rydberg orbital really is, ju is, is just looking at, if you are far, far away from your, from your uh, 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 atom, right, uh, you have essentially, uh, you have to sum and, and look at the charge, the overall charge of this atom. If you look down, right, so what will happen? What will happen is that essentially uh, you would have a uh, nucleus uh, surrounded by a charge uh, cloud, right? All the electrons surrounded by a charge cloud. And of course, uh, they, they would, uh, the effect of the positive nuclei will be shielded by the exact charge uh, on the outside. They kind of look like, essentially look like a hydrogen atom because they, they're spherical, right? You don't, you don't care about if you're so far away, the valence bonding, the, the valence bonding uh, you will not see because you, you look like uh, uh, really far away and it look like uh, they don't exist because it becomes very spiritual. Okay, so, so let me try to elaborate this with the state. So here we have one nuclei, another nuclei. Let's think about the uh, hydrogen atom. And you form uh, these, uh, these bonds. This is a sigma bond, right, for example. But if you are really, really far away from here, this, this electron density is starting to degrade, right? Starting to go down. And they, if you draw the electron density, they become more and more spherical as you, as you look out from, from here. And, and this, uh, this symmetry that you got near the nuclei does not exist anymore uh, because you are very far away. It looks like just a spherical charge cloud. And that is kind of like a hydrogen atom uh, and that is commonly known as Ripper orbital that we are going out to our, And these Ripper orbital are usually very, very close to the ionization continuum. You really like atomic light, hydrogen atom like Ripper state. Okay, so if you take this picture, uh, how, how do you classify? You can then classify this band uh, by, uh, by another way. Uh, you can call them insulators. Uh, such that all the allowed energy states are either completely filled or completely empty. Uh, and, uh, and so what happens if they are completely filled? Such as like this, they are completely filled, completely empty in the band. If you apply even a pi bias to this molecule, nothing can move because they have no space, right? No empty orbital for it to move within the band, right? Uh, and, and so, that, so 
So that's why it's an insulator. You cannot conduct electricity even if you apply a bias. However, if you have a metal, uh, what will happen? One of the bands is partially filled or partially empty, uh, and partially means uh, 10 to about 90 percent. So in a situation like this, this is a metal, right? So now you have an empty band. What, what does that mean? That means that if you apply a bias, your electron can go to some empty, uh, empty band location, uh, and then you can move. You can sort of move around. So from one location of your of your metal, right? So let's say from one atom of your metal, you can you can then apply a potential that can move from atom to atom uh, due to the 